Hello my friends, Lenny with Vintage Nationals on the web at nationalguitar.com. I'm going to share with you today a little uh, discovery. I've been sent this earlier style O12 fretter. And I haven't opened it yet, so I'm going to open it along with you. This is around a 1931 style O. Brass body. It has the hooks on cover plate. You can see these little hooks and I'll show you them closer and then a single screw at the top. This is actually meant to rotate the hooks go into a little slot and turn and tighten and then you put the screw in. You can see there's been a bit of a dent going on in the bottom right here that we'll try to massage out a little bit. The action is a bit high as is usually the case. Another thing I'm noticing is that so the angle of the saddle, if you can see, it's kind of angled from one side to the other. And another thing I notice on this guitar is uh, it has the original tuners. It's got a nice decal on it. It's been refretted. On some of the frets, there's paint, so this, this fretboard has been uh, refinished or repainted. You can see how shiny it is there. You can see on a couple of those frets there, there's paint still on the frets. Now, another telltale sign that this guitar has been opened up before is the screw itself which these early ones were were typically made out of brass and then plated were soft so, so this thing's pretty pretty beat up so this has been opening is opened a handful of times probably along the way i'm going to take my tailpiece off next the original tail pieces would have had a brass pin with a metal steel wood screw going through there okay the standard length screw that you would get with a brass you can see the brass coming through on the tail pin. I'm going to lift this straight up now. Now, as you can see, I will need to, if I want to take this off in one piece, I need to rotate that cover plate. So that's it. Let me show you that closer. There's that much play if you can see that. Okay, so here we go. As I lift them up together, set them aside. Okay, first disappointment is this is not an original cone. This is not even a national cone. This is a, uh, I believe it's a quarterman. As you can see, this piece wasn't even screwed on tight. The screw has about a half an inch of play in it, so we've got this going on there. We're going to need a new cone. This is the original biscuit with a new saddle put in there. As I look inside, just to make a couple observations, in the cover plate, I wanna show you the, uh, you can see it's been polished a few times right here. This is a residue from someone polishing the outside with a wet nickel polish. But here you can see the actual hooks for the hooks on cover plate. You can also see why, you see this one right here, how it's bent up like that. I mean, that's, that's already been bent that far. Once they bend up and down a couple times, they're prone to break off. You know, this one's pretty down a little bit, whereas this one here is raised upward. Um, and these can break. If this breaks off there, you've got nothing holding this section of that plate down there. So uh, they went away from this and put nine screws on there ultimately, but there was a period of time where they did do the hooks on. To show you, the receptacle area of the hooks on little rectangles so you could drop it in there and then turn it. So you can see there's eight little rectangles along with a one single screw. Now another thing interesting in this guitar is it's got the side posts on it. You see these posts over here? Normally on these guitars there's always a support down here below and then a support up here right at the right below the uh, neck stick here. But sometimes there's also support on each side, the left and right. And the reason being, some of these backs on these guitars, now keep in mind, this top and side, top and side are one piece. These are actually made on a big press and pushed down a flat piece of metal becomes this top and side. The back is a separate piece. The separate piece is soldered all the way around this edge and that's the one joint on this body. Now, what happens sometimes is this body will actually become like an oil can, pops in and out, and it's just floppy like that. It, that's how this body would be if it did not have those sides. That's how they uh, dealt with the few that did, you know, because sometimes this metal would warp a little bit from the heat of doing the soldering and uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have the rigidity that you'd hope. I don't think the neck's ever been reset on this. This looks to be pretty original. Oh, dust ball sighting. Dust ball sighting. Dust ball sighting. 
Oh yeah, there it is. The neck has pulled forward. You start to get a gap in here. When that neck pulls forward, you look down the neck and it comes down to the 12 fret and then the flap lifts up a little bit because the neck has pulled forward over time. So we're gonna take this neck out, reset it, move the angle backward. We're gonna throw this cone in the dumper. We will put a new saddle inside here. Gonna massage these out a little bit. Hooks are all in good shape. They're all in the cover plate. They'll go together nicely. The plating on this guitar is nice. And uh, there you go. That's my little visit. I hope you enjoyed this little tour along with me. Kind of like uh, Geraldo Rivera going into uh, El Capone's uh, catacombs. Or, uh, so it's always interesting to open these up and see what's inside there. Most of the time they've been messed with. More often than not someone's done something along the way which unfortunately means we're going to have to put some work in to get it right. But by the time it's done uh, the person's going to be happy. This guitar is going to be far better when it leaves here uh, than it is at this very moment, as you can see. We'll see you at the Pick and Parlor at nationalguitar.com. Upload some videos. We're up to almost 200 videos up there now. It's a lot of fun, and we'll see you there at nationalguitar.com.